Sam, my second question for you is, you mentioned that creating content or creating uh, LinkedIn communities these days is becoming very essential. Everyone is posting their ideas, they're sharing what they're thinking, especially you know, in the mornings, I have a morning virtual, or I read this book, this, is, uh, this I recommend, things like that. So what tips do you have for people who are not used to creating content on LinkedIn? And if you can give specific example what they can do, I'll appreciate that. Okay, um, I think when it comes to creating content, right, most people might think of it as something really huge, mm -hmm. writing a long article, doing a long video that's, that creates a lot of inertia, which makes it really difficult to even start, right? So what has helped me is, I think, a couple of things. One is, think of how can you draw, draw inspirations from your daily life first. <clears throat> I mean, there is no need to kind of think of positioning yourself as a thought leader right from the beginning, right? That I have to have something revolutionary, something that's groundbreaking, you know. You don't have to start there. You know, that, it takes time to build up to that level. But for a start, I'll encourage people who haven't started or barely started in a sense, to draw inspirations from your daily life. For example, a conversation with you today, right? For example, an article that I read or a book that I read recently or something that I observed when I was out, you know, meeting somebody or things like that, a day-to-day -day kind of thing. Because every single day, I mean, we have 24 hours, probably awake for like 18 hours or so. We have many engagements, many touch points that can give us that, give us that inspiration that engagement point itself. So that will be one thing that I'll encourage you to think about. Observe a little bit more. You probably see a lot of things, a lot of content creation opportunities available. Second thing, second thing is then think of it, how can you start something more bite-sized, right? So in the past, I used to think, how can I write an article which took me a little bit more to kind of craft out something, to prepare, draft out, you know, edit, so on and so forth. But I realized that it's a good thing that, for example, on LinkedIn, you know, there's a word limit or character limit of 1,300 characters, right? So that helps you to restrict your post as well. Mm -hmm. And that means that you have to write something short and sweet and to the point. So that, for me, having something that's short and sweet to the point, something more bite-sized, is actually a good start. It could be, like you mentioned, asking a simple question, asking for perspective. It could be sharing a thought and getting others to think, okay, what do you think about my perspective or my experience have you seen something like this for example yeah. so really draw inspiration from day-to-day -day life and getting something small starting small can help you build that momentum and things will seem a lot easier once you feel comfortable with the bite size stuff yeah. yeah and you also mentioned in the previous video that uh you started building a hr community in, in singapore I want to ask as a follow-up question, do you think that the HR industry in Singapore or in Asia is a little bit different than in Northern America? Or there are um, some similarities? So based on my observation, I'm not too sure how is it like exactly in North America, but based on my observation on online and in interaction with some friends, I would say generally the community in Asia is a little bit more, less outspoken maybe, I'll say in that way, right? So when it comes to sharing in an open community kind of thing or online, typically the Asian community is a little bit more reserved as compared to our North American counterparts that are typically more vocal about their thoughts, typically. But when it comes to in-person, when it comes to sharing, um, I would say for the Asian side, they're really comfortable. You know, they're really giving. They don't mind sharing more. But I think it's just about the Asian culture where typically you don't really want to put yourself in front because for us yeah, based on value system it seems like you're showing off if you talk too much mm -hmm. which is a little bit of a stigma that's holding some of the Asian community back in terms of sharing openly which is why part and parcel of it Stories of Asia was created mm -hmm. because I wanted to create a platform you know for Asian community whether you're Asian or non-Asian you know itself I feel really comfortable about sharing what's happening in this part of the world and for the rest of the world to understand what's happening here because it's, the, the culture is so rich. You know, we have so many things here that's happening, but you guys probably don't know what's happening here because there's not much sharing over here unless you come over this part of the world. Yeah. So that's really what I'm hoping to do to create a kind of exchange, which I think is really meaningful. Yeah. Yeah, well, while I was there in Singapore or in other areas, like I really ex uh, felt that uh, the culture is different. You have very rich culture and every I encourage everyone to visit once in a while to see and people are very nice, uh, very clean and very humble and something that I was not expecting that. So again, thank you, Sam, for sharing uh, the Asian culture or how to create content. And for the audience, if you have any other tips or any other advices that 
that uh, job seekers will benefit in creating content, please leave it in the comment section. Uh, like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, and tune in next time for another question with Sam.